Good evening and welcome to the Main Street Church of Christ, our midweek devotional uh, that we have here online. So good to have you with us. We're doing this a little bit different with a little bit of new scenery, opening up our auditorium. Uh, We thought we would film uh, some of these outside uh, over the coming weeks. And so we're glad that you are joining us this evening. If I were to ask, what do you really want? What would you say? At seven years old, I know exactly what Harper wants. Daddy, can I have ice cream for dessert? Or Daddy, can I have this new toy? I don't have to wonder. Uh, I don't have to wonder what what Harper wants. She'll tell me exactly uh, what she wants. Now, Lily Jo, on the other hand, is a little bit different matter. You know, when it comes to to, to toddlers, when it comes to babies, uh, they're usually the, the big three. If if Lily's not happy, usually one of the big three will suffice. Either she's sleepy and it's time for bed. Uh, She needs a diaper change uh, because she's dirty or she's hungry. Usually if you take care of one of those three things, that satisfies, but every once in a while, those three things don't work and Lily Jo gets frustrated, but she's not able to tell me exactly what it is that she wants. And of course, as any parent, I don't know if, if I'm the only one, I don't think I am, but I have to admit from time to time, I just look at her and I say, Lily, what do you really want? Because I don't know. Well, if I were to ask you, what do you really want, what would you say? Over the next four weeks, I want us to answer that question in a unique way. As a matter of fact, the next four weeks are going to basically be one type of lesson, but I'm going to break it up over four, over four different over four different weeks. So I'll be with you over the next few weeks, and, and Daniel and I will continue writing the, the weekly devotionals. But here's what I truly think. I think that Jesus can satisfy our deepest needs and desires. In other words, the things that we really want, Jesus can provide. And the only way that I can think that somebody may disprove these is to say, no, I really don't want them. And you know, I have to admit of the four that we're talking about, three, I could concede and say that you could probably find them in some measure out in the world. But the last one, the thing that we'll talk about a few weeks from now, I truly believe that Jesus is the only one who can fully satisfy. But these big four things of the human heart that we really want, I truly believe that God and His Son Christ Jesus can truly satisfy. And as a matter of fact, they correspond to different stages in our lives as we work up, so to speak, in these four great areas. And tonight what I want us to do is start with Jesus satisfies our desire or our need for wonder. Jesus satisfies our need for wonder. The idea behind wonder, of course, is that childlike quality of wanting to be amazed. You know, children get amazed at the smallest things. Lily Jo has just learned peekaboo, right? Uh, Where's Lily Jo, we'll say, and Lily will cover her eyes and then she'll come drop her hands and she'll smile great big and we'll say, there she is. And she just laughs and laughs. And I know as as parents, as grandparents, any of us will play that game for hours uh, when it comes to babies. But as we get older, uh, we see that wonder still remains even through childhood. My seven-year-old's imagination. Uh, If she puts on a princess dress, all of a sudden her entire world changes when her imagination goes wild. If you have a little boy at home, I don't know how you were growing up, but I know if you found a good stick in the woods, that stick could become a sword or a gun or a hundred other things and all of a sudden you could find yourself entertained we have that sense of wonder built within us even as we get older that wonder may get greater but we still want to be amazed I'm ashamed to admit this but a few years ago when the first Avengers movie came out we took a church van uh, from Highland Uh, a group of us men went for the midnight premiere and here's the funny thing, here was a van full of men, and I have to admit, at 32 years old, 33 years old, I was the youngest one in the van driving. All of these older guys that we wanted to go see this movie because of the effects and because of the story and the Marvel and the comic books and the superheroes. You know, there's a reason why all of those Marvel movies have generated $22 billion. It's because they satisfy our need of wonder even as we get older and I think wonder is something that truly needs to be satisfied because of the opposite of wonder how it is so pervasive in our world and the opposite of course is boredom when we think of how bored the world is H.L. Mencken said the problem with life is not that it's a tragedy but that it's a bore none of us want to be bored Bertrand Russell uh, that famed atheist 
uh, from years ago said this, Boredom is therefore a vital problem, since at least half the sins of mankind are caused by fear of it. Now think about that for just a minute, and I think that's true. How many people abuse substances, whether it's alcohol or drugs, because they're bored and they have nothing else to do? How many men and young men and, and even some women get addicted to pornography? Why? Because they're bored. They have nothing else to do. How many of us get lost in social media and in the lives of others and what they're posting? The, the scroll hole I heard as we scroll through all of those various feeds that we have on social media. Why do we get so wrapped up in those things? Well, because we're bored and we want to live through others or wonder what others are doing. And you know, over the past few months with this social distancing and quarantine, I think all of this has grown even more. But it's this wonder for us. It's this wonder for us that I truly believe Jesus can satisfy. Let me show you how. If you look in Mark's gospel, I love Mark's gospel. I love all the gospels, but I love Mark's because one of the things in Mark's gospels is Mark talks about the various emotions that people have. And at the very beginning in Mark chapter 1, verse 27, the text says this, They were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Here was Jesus casting out demons and teaching, teaching as, as, as others had, had never taught before. And the people were watching this and hearing this, and what were they? They were amazed. In the very next chapter, in Mark chapter 2, verse 12, talks about how Jesus healed a, healed a paralyzed man and then forgave him of sins. And people were astonished that Jesus would take on that role of forgiving sins. They were amazed at who Jesus is. Think about at the end of his life, as he stands before Pilate. And it says this in Mark 15, verse 5, And, and Jesus made no further answer so that Pilate was amazed. You know, they have a back and forth, John tells us, but there were great points within that conversation where apparently Jesus didn't say anything and the look on his face was one of contentment and not one of fear. And Pilate, when he has this conversation with Jesus, Mark records, he was amazed. You ever stop to think that Jesus truly can amaze us? He can truly fulfill our sense of wonder? The Hebrew writer says this in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. What an incredible picture of who our Jesus is and where he is now. Think about what all Jesus has done. He transformed sinners into incredible saints. His teachings have literally changed the world and how people view the world. John 1 and Colossians 1 say his hand was involved in every aspect of creation. So every sunset or beautiful scene that you see, it was Jesus as the one who was behind it. Can I tell you tonight that if you look at Jesus, he most certainly can amaze you. H.G. Wells, no believer, says this, I'm a historian and not a believer, but I must confess as a historian that this penniless preacher from Nazareth is irrevocably the very center of history. Jesus Christ is easily the most dominant figure in all of history. Western civilization was shaped by Jesus. If that doesn't amaze you, I don't know what will. It's no wonder that Paul, after speaking of all the incredible things that Jesus does for us in salvation and in tearing down walls of barriers between people, it has this as a doxology in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Can I tell you tonight, you can find entertainment in many places, but they will only curb your boredom for so long. What we need is someone to truly satisfy our sense of wonder. And that's exactly what Jesus does for us. He can constantly amaze us if we turn our eyes to Him. So if I were to ask you tonight, what do you really want? I think the first thing relating to especially our age of childhood has to do with wonder. Jesus can truly amaze us. 
Thank you for joining us tonight. If you need any spiritual need, we would, uh, or if we can help you with any spiritual need, please contact us at the church office and we would love to do anything we can for you. If you have some news that we need to know about, please let us know as well. But I thank you for joining us this evening. If we could, let's close with a word of prayer. God, I thank you for your love and your grace. I thank you for constantly amazing us in so many ways, both in our world and through your Son, Christ Jesus. Lord, may we always have eyes that see the amazing things that your Son has done for us, that you do for us. And so, God, tonight I pray that you fill us with that wonder, that you help us uh, to fight against the things of the world that bore us or that don't satisfy. Uh, but, God, I just pray. I just pray that you would give us eyes to see the incredible the incredible things that you and your son do for us. Lord, thank you for him. Bless all of us this evening. Be with those who need you tonight, especially those who need you in a spiritual way. But we thank you for loving us and for sending your son to die for us. And we pray, dear Lord, that you would forgive us of anything that we have done wrong. Bless us again. Thank you for Jesus. And it's in his name that I pray. Amen.